There are more drastic forms of protest, though, than, than uh, marching and leaflets. In 1963, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk, as a protest against the Vietnam regime, went out into a public place, set himself alight and burned to death. Did no good, because that's not a threat or a deterrent. <laughs> if a little, little monk comes up to you and he goes, you better stop all those things you're doing, otherwise I'm going to set myself alight. You're going to set yourself alight. <laughs> Fill your boots, mate. I don't... <laughs> then no one cared, and I bet you don't even know his name, do you? I do. I've looked it up. It's absolutely true. His name was Thick Quang Duck. <laughs> or Crispy Duck to his mates. I've heard. Oh. <clears throat> John Lennon. A less drastic form of protest against the Vietnam War, the famous sleeping. He stayed in bed for a week with Yoko Ono, and that was it. And people were going, brilliant, genius, that is, that's excellent. And, you know, I bet that little monk was fucking gutted. <laughs> and, Hold on, what? Burn yourself to death or shag Yoko? <laughs> I love it when rock stars get involved. I absolutely love it. The political song. Ooh. Look out, mate. He's got a guitar. <laughs> He's saying what he thinks in C. <laughs> it's OK when it's people like, you know, Bob Dylan. And, but I love it when um, pop stars have a go. Yeah. Do you remember um, Culture Club's classic? They'd been singing Karma Comedian oh, for too long. And uh, they came up with the war song. Ooh. And in that, they go, War, war is stupid, and people are stupid. <sighs> How's that going to change your mind? I mean, if you're into war, you're loving war, you love it, it's your favourite thing. You, you go, hmm. I mean, you're in, a, you're in a plane, you're going to bomb the shit out of a country, oh, I can't wait to get there, I love bombing people, oh, oh, nearly there, put the radio on, oh. <laughs> war, war is stupid, and people are stupid. We're going home. <laughs> Boy George there. He piled on the pounds when he gave up the smack, didn't he? <laughs> There's a fable there, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Every action has a consequence, so... Ooh. Billy Joel, after singing things like Uptown Girl, he then revealed his classic, his, pro oh, his protest song against the world. We didn't start the fire. And in that song, ho -ho, he, it's basically a list, um, in chronological order, right, from 1949 to 1989, and he just mentions sort of six to eight things, each verse. I just read, he goes, Harry Truman, Doris Day, Red China, Johnny Ray, South Pacific Water, Witchel, Joe DiMaggio, Joe McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Stoudbecker Television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. That's not a song. <laughs> That's a conversation with Rain Man. <laughs> I think the, uh, the first protest song that actually made a difference was um, Do They Know It's Christmas? And particularly poignant to us in Britain because we used to own and run Africa. And then at the end of the 50s, they wanted independence and slowly we started giving it back to Africa. And by the end of the 60s, it was totally Africa-owned and Africa-ruled course. In the 80s, we get a phone call. Um, Thatcher answers, hello. <laughs> hello, it's Africa. What do you want? <laughs> We're all starving and that. Oh, stop. Let me give you that phone. You should have thought of that <laughs> before you wanted independence. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know there was going to be a drought. Drought? I'll give you a fucking drought. In the long, hot summer of 1976, <laughs> we had a hosepipe ban in Reading. <laughs> yes. In drought. My poor mum having to make loads of journeys with a bowl of water for the lawn. <laughs> Under the cover of darkness. With her back. We've all got fucking problems, mate. <laughs>